Hello booktube, Sarah here and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm coming to you with my weekly reads for January the 6th, 2018. <laughs> it's 2018. I've been writing 2017 still. I've been saying 2017 still. Um, I'm going to be doing that till about July and then at that point then I remember it's 2018. <laughs> Does anybody else do that? Does anybody have a hard time this time of year trying to remember exactly what date it is. It's crazy, isn't it? So I'm actually drinking hot chocolate today. I am not having a tea. Um, I decided I was just kind of in the mood for a hot chocolate and I use my Keurig and I go to this great little store not far from me that you can buy them individually. Um, and I always like to get them because I can try lots of different flavors. So I pulled this one out of my Keurig just so I could tell you guys. This is Brooklyn Bean Hot Cocoa is the name and it is Campfire Hot Cocoa and it's marshmallow flavored. Guys, it is so good. Definitely, if you get a chance, try it. If you've got a Keurig, um, they are to die for. I absolutely love them. If you couldn't tell from the thumbnail, it was a rather slow reading week for me. Um, I only finished, I shouldn't say that, I finished two books. Very proud of myself. They were actually two of the larger books on my TBR for January, so I'm happy to have gotten them out of the way. Um, and um, it gives me more time to focus on the books that are a little bit shorter. Um, so yeah, and I really enjoyed them. And I was back to work this week after, you know, having 10 days off. So I had to get back into the swing of things at work and that takes, you know, time and whatever. So yeah, two books. Um, the first one was How to Fall in Love by Cecilia Ahern. And I gave this book four stars and it has an average rating on Goodreads of 4.01 stars. And I got three challenges completed out of this one. I'm so excited to be starting these new challenges for, for the new year. The first one, of course, is the Buy the Number Quarterly Challenge, which was already going on, and I got five words out of this one. The second one is a new challenge. This one I don't think I mentioned in my challenges video, um, and it is the A to Z Locations Challenge. And essentially what it is, it's exactly what it sounds like, is that from A to Z, read books from different locations. And they say in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the message board thread that if you read like sci-fi and stuff like that, it can be, you know, a made-up place. It can be a real place. It can be, you know, whatever you want it to be. And as long as it's a location. So this first book, book excuse me, this book that I read actually took place in Dublin, uh, Ireland, which I didn't realize, which was kind of nice. Um, and, you know, a lot of slang, Irish slang and things like that. But um, I actually used Ireland. So I used this one for I because I thought D might be easier to get than an I. So that's why I did that. And then the last one, this was my Pick It For Me challenge for January, one of the ones. This is the book that was not on my TBR, but was recommended to me by my picky, if you will. And I loved this book. I'm so thrilled that this is the one that I picked to read. I was really apprehensive at first because of the subject matter. Um, the entire plot of the book is, it's about a woman named Christine, and it's told in first person. And... Um, at the beginning of the book, she has something happen to her, and then the same thing, almost the same thing happens again, and essentially she meets up with a man who's about to throw himself off a bridge and essentially commit suicide, and she talks him down and then tells him that, you know, it's two weeks till his birthday, and she essentially says to him, you know, give me two weeks to show you how wonderful your life can actually be. And it's kind of their their adventure, if you will, of, of this. But hanging over the whole thing is this is this suicide, and it's a very, very dark underlying topic in this book, but it was pulled off so well. Um, it was done with, um, uh, the, the author really put thought into it, and, you know, it wasn't done in any malicious t intent. It was done very well. It was done very honestly, um, you know, and, you know, Christine admits that she's no therapist and people keep telling her maybe he needs to see a therapist, but he doesn't want to. You know, he'd broken up with his girlfriend. He's being looking, he's having to take over his family company and he doesn't want to. There's a whole lot of things that are going on in his life. And again, she's just trying to show him how great it can be. But of course, in the meantime, she falls in love with him. So there's where the romance aspect of the story comes in. Um, this is classified as a romance novel. I don't know if I would consider it to be that because... Maybe because of these underlying dark tones in the book, but oh, guys, I still really, really enjoyed it. Please do yourself a favor and read it. Um, you know, it's it's a very clean story as well. Um, you know, there's uh, there is some swearing in it. Um, Christine's extended family, her dad and her sisters, are a hoot. Um, they were wonderful in this book, and I absolutely loved it. Highly recommend it. Um, yeah, 
So as I said before, one of the new things I'm going to start doing um, on my channel is when I finish a book is I'm going to give you guys like the first couple of lines, like the first little paragraph of the book, um, just so you can get a taste. So it says, they say lightning never strikes twice. Untrue. Well, it's true that people say it. It's just untrue as a fact. And then that starts off this whole thing that happened to her at the beginning and then leading up to meeting Adam, who was the gentleman who was trying to kill himself and what have you. But yes, again, guys, read this book. It was absolutely fabulous. So the second book that I finished this week was One Good Earl Deserves a Lover by Sarah McLean. Um, this is narrated on audio by Rosalind Landor, and it is book number two in the Rules of Scoundrel series. This is a historical regency romance. It is very spicy. Um, I gave it 4.5 stars, and it has an average rating of 4.06 stars on Goodreads, and I got three challenges completed out of this one. Um, the Triple RC Challenge for January, uh, the monthly challenge number nine, which was National Corn Chip Day, which was read a book with a yellow um, or a blue cover, and this one obviously has a beautiful blue cover. Um, the next one was also for the By the Numbers Quarterly Challenge. I got six words out of this one. And again, for the Location Challenge, I picked Mayfair, London. Mayfair is mentioned several times in the book. It is a kind of a city within the city, if you will, in London. Um, and it's where the aristoc aristocats, aristocrats, aristocats, <laughs> a lovely movie by Disney, where the aristocrats live in London during Regency times. So, um, yes, I really, really like this book. The only reason this did not get five stars from me is because it was really slow to start, unfortunately. It took a little bit to build up to, you know, everything going on. But this is the story of uh, Pippa and, Cr and uh, Cross. Uh, Philippa is actually her name. And she is the sister to Penelope from the first book. And Cross is another one of the gentlemen who run this gaming hell. That um, It's a gambling, uh, essentially it's a casino. Um, like an underground casino in London for the very well-to-do. And, um, you know, pretty much when you step behind the doors of this casino, you don't talk about what happens inside the casino. And she comes to him because she is due to get married. In just a few weeks and she doesn't she's concerned um, because she doesn't understand about the whole um, things that happen between a husband and a wife when they get married um, to put it politely and um, not that she's asking him to show her but she's just looking for more information to find out you know stuff that she doesn't know she's very very scientific she's considered to be a little odd um, everyone's always found her to be very odd she's bespeckled as it says in the meaning she wears glasses my disappointment in this too is if you look at the cover, I wish they had her in her glasses because she just sounds adorable. You can see them on the table, she's holding them, but I really, really wish that whoever did the cover for this would have had her wearing her glasses because she wore them throughout the entire book. She can't see without them. So, you know, but she's very scientific and she's a little odd and she wants to do everything scientifically and her, her whole world is black and white. That's just the way it is. She doesn't like lying, she doesn't like liars, you know, things like that. Cross is not his real name. He has an entire backstory that um, is really, really interesting that I don't want to get into in case you want to read this and want to be surprised. Um, or, you know, I don't want to ruin it for you, essentially. Um, but it's essentially their relationship and, and, you know, how, you know, the gambling aspect comes into effect. And there's a great scene at the very, very end of this book that actually had me smiling. And, you know, as I'm driving in my car on the way home last night, you know, freezing cold, um, I'm listening to this and it just brought me joy like it was such a great great scene and it really tipped it over to a 4.5 star read for me um, the ending was fantastic I loved it this book is very spicy um, be warned um, but that is typical of these kind of books anyway and yeah I absolutely loved it so let me read you the opening little bit now each chapter in this book starts off with something that uh, Pippa herself writes and it's in her scientific journal and that was kind of a lot of fun. It says, Avenues for investigation have become severely limited, as has time. In the name of proper inquiry, I have made arrangements to my research. I have made adjustments, excuse me, to my research. Serious adjustments. It says, from the scientific journal of Lady Philippa Mayberry, March 21st, 1831, 15 days prior to her wedding. So like I said, each chapter starts out with one of these little things, kind of going about what happened in the previous chapter. And every day it counts down to how many more days before her wedding. Now, her wedding, please be noticed, noted, is not to Cross. It is to somebody completely different. But she goes to him 
because he's known as a rake and a scoundrel and you know he's not in society so so she thinks so you know it, it, she won't be damaged too much by going to him because nobody will ever find out so yes absolutely love this book this is a great great series and I am thoroughly enjoying it and there are two more left in the series and I will definitely hopefully fingers crossed be finishing them this year so what am I currently reading my current audiobook is royally matched by Emma Chase this is book number two in the royally series and it is narrated on audio by Shane East and Andy Arnett um, or Andy Andy Arnett I, I apologize um, I listened to this first book late last year, late in 2017, and I really enjoyed it, and I'm really looking forward to this one. I'm only about a half an hour, 45 minutes into the audiobook, not very far at all. These are the same two narrators from the first book, and this is um, Nicholas from the first book. It's his younger brother, Henry. And Henry is now, without giving away too much from book number one, he is now um, heir to the throne. And he is having to act and be a certain way when he was the wild child. You know, he was the one jetting off to Vegas to hang out with strippers, or he was the one who was drinking in excess and ending up, you know, with his picture all over social media. And um, he's now, just, just at the part that I'm at now, he's been asked by this woman to appear on a television show, almost like The Bachelor, it sounds like, but it's called Matched. And they want to do a royal edition, and they want him to essentially be The Bachelor. And then they will bring in all these blue-blooded women, and then he can pick his soon-to-be queen. So that's where the story is going to go. And, you know, I really enjoyed the narration. The, the narrating um, in the first book was great. I know it's going to be great again. And the writing in these books are really great. They are uh, very spicy. Um, there is quite a bit of swearing. Um, but they are an enjoyable read if you like that kind of thing. Um, the book that I'm currently reading, um, ebook, is the, for something completely different, is The Cat Who Turned On and Off by Lillian Jackson Braun. This is the third book in the Cat Who Mystery series. And sadly, just as I started reading this one, I got two pages in and realized it takes place at Christmas time. <laughs> you guys know my thing. I have a hard time reading books that take place at Christmas time when it's not Christmas time. But you know what? It was mentioned at the beginning. It is kind of a plot point because um, Quill, um, who is the man, uh, he is a newspaper reporter. And this is a whole cozy mystery series for those of you who are unfamiliar with it. And he has two Siamese cats named Coco and Yum Yum. And, you know, they kind of solve mysteries, essentially. And at the very beginning of this, he works for the newspaper, and the newspaper is offering a, um, a prize for the best story during the Christmas season. So he decides to write a piece on this area of town called Junk Town, which is where um, a lot of antiques are being sold and things like that. Um, this is such an enjoyable series for me. These are all rereads for me. I read them all many, many, many years ago. And... Um, yeah, I am really looking forward to getting into this one even more. I'm about 30% of the way through it right now. Um, it's a relatively short book, a little, like around 250 pages, so it's not terribly long. I'm hoping to actually get it done tonight, if not earlier tomorrow, and then I can start on my next book. But yeah, no, I am really enjoying going through this series. My big disappointment about this, and I've, I've mentioned this before, is that these are not all available on audio. Only some of them are, and, and you know, I really, really wish more of them were because they really are great reads. And unfortunately, the series ended a number of years ago. These first so many books were actually published in the 1960s. So I don't think too many people really are aware of them. And I wish they would kind of get a resurgence because they really are a great series. I'm able to grab them all from my library. So that's been absolutely fabulous. Now, before I let you guys go, I was kind of hoping this might be a shorter video, but we shall see. Um, I wanted to talk to you about one more challenge that I have decided to compete in, or, or participate in. I don't know why I keep saying compete. Uh, decided to participate in for 2018. I was looking um, on the Romance Readers group um, for the yearly challenges on January 1st, because they were posting all the, uh, the ones for this year. And this one came up, and I'd seen it last year in passing and kind of went, okay, maybe, maybe next time. But then when I saw it again, it, it clicked in my brain. I'm like, yes, I did want to do that. And this is a really fun series for anyone else who is trying to finish series. You don't necessarily have to join in on this, but I think it's a really fun idea. Like if you have a notebook or some other way that you keep track of what you're reading during um, the year, this might be kind of fun to do as well. And it's called the Stacking the Series Challenge. And I have a lot of series that I want to get through. You guys know this. I mentioned that as being one of my goals for 2018 was to work my way through series instead of continuously starting new ones. Um, so the way this series works is, or the way this challenge works is, is that you have to have a minimum of five series. That's a maximum of whatever craziness you want. 
but a minimum of five. And the way it works is you pick one series and you read five books out of that series. You pick another one, you read four. You pick another one, you read three, two, one out of that series, and that's how it goes. So, you know, essentially you're working your way through some series. If some of them, you only have a few books to finish, those would go more towards the bottom. If you've got a lot more to read in a series, you can stick it up near the top. So um, I was looking through other people's um, posts and some people are doing 20 series this year. Holy cow. So essentially you'd be reading 20 books in one series, 19, 18, and so on and so forth. Um, I'm at the crazy halfway <laughs> and I'm doing 10. <laughs> 10. I picked 10. Um, but these I had to pick ahead of time. Like it's, you've got it kind of list out this is what I'm going to read this year and you've got the whole year this runs until December 31st so there's lots and lots of time um and I decided to kind of just sit here right now and tell you guys what books I do plan on reading for these and I will be fitting these in where I can so when monthly challenges come up and things like that I will be looking at this list first to see if I can slot anything in and then go from there so there are already two series on here you guys are probably already familiar with the fact that I am reading my way through them on a monthly basis, but let me tell you guys first. So my level 10 is actually the Love and Bloom series by Melissa Foster. I have not started this series. This is one that is new. I will be starting with book one and reading through to book 10. Um, that is my goal. And I've been collecting these books, but you have yet to pick them up to read them. And this was a last minute edition this morning. I posted my list on Monday on the 1st of January, and I had only nine levels, essentially nine different series. But I, I thought about this one during the week and I decided to finally add it because, I, like again, I have these books, I have a lot of these books and I haven't started them yet and I just need a reason. So I thought this was the perfect reason to start and I did not realize, guys, hold on to your hats, this series has 80 some odd books in it. Eight zero. Yes, that's insane. Um, essentially they are sub-series within this like big Love and Bloom series, but then she does like little series in between and they kind of jump around like the actual reading order jumps around and um, so I've got them listed from books 1 to 10 within the Love and Bloom series. So these are contemporary romance, they can be a little bit spicy, but I am looking forward to getting into them and um, the romance package on Audible actually has the first three books available for the romance package and I think the ones after that are available on audio, which is fantastic. So the next series for level 9 is one that I'm already reading through, which is uh, Love at the Chocolate Shop and that's by various authors. So there are nine books left in that series for me to read this year. Um, so I'll be reading from book four, from book four to book twelve. The next series is the Crew of Hunters series, of course, by Heather Graham. I'll be reading from book sixteen to book twenty-three, which is eight, and that will finish the series to current. Um, but very exciting! I saw this on Amazon a couple months ago. Um, book number twenty-four is being published in May. Yay! Uh, the series is continuing. I'm so thrilled. I didn't know if it was done or if it was ongoing or what have you, but um, I did see that it is coming out. So I will not necessarily be adding that to this list, but I will hopefully get it read this year as well. Level number seven is the Sweetwater Ranch series by Dolores Fawson. Um, I'll be reading from, from book two to book eight. This is a completed series, like the author's not writing anymore. And I believe it's a Harlequin Intrigue series. So these are relatively short and straightforward and, you know, they'll be a lot of fun. Um, the next one is Level 6, The Texas Cattleman's Club After the Storm. This is also written by various authors. And I'll be reading from book 2 to book 7. Um, again, this is another series that is, is completed um, by the authors. Um, and these are Harlequin Desire. So again, short, quicker, contemporary romance novels. Um, excuse me. Level 5 is Capital Canine Unit. Uh, this is also by various authors. This is a love-inspired suspense series, I believe, about um, the police and their police dogs. So I really enjoyed the first one, so I'm looking forward to the rest of them. Um, level four is the Red Dirt Royalty series by Silver James. I'll be reading from book four to book seven. Um, and book seven actually ends with a Christmas book. So I already have one Christmas book that I know I'm going to be reading next December. Yes, I know. Um, you're like, it's far too early to be talking about Christmas. Um... I love this series. You guys know I love this series. This is another uh, Harlequin Desire series. Very much looking forward to finishing this one off. I do not know if this is the series finished. Like, I don't know if it's still ongoing, if Silver James is still writing more for it. Um, but it will take me to current. The next one for level three is Rock Kiss by Nalia Singh. Um, 
I read the first book last year and it was okay. I, I liked it. I didn't dislike it. But there are three other books in the series, books uh, two, three, and four. So I decided, why not go ahead and read them? They are available on audio. I'm pretty sure they're part of the romance package. So I can read them for free and I might as well check them off my list. Um, the next one for level two is the Puffin Island series by Sarah Morgan. Um, this was a three book series and um, I don't think any more being written, don't quote me. But um, again, I'm very much looking forward to finishing this one off. And for level one, it's Love Between the Bases series by Jennifer Bernard with book number three. Um, it's the last in the series. I read book one in 2016, book two in 2017, so I might as well now read book number three um, in 2018. Now, when I mention these, this is not counting any novellas that may come before books. We, I don't count novellas in these because generally with these challenges, you have to read, your books have to be a minimum, I think, of 125 pages. Most novellas are not. So I wasn't going to try and count them. If I hit a, if I get to a book that has a novella that comes before it, I will just go ahead and read the novella because generally they're pretty short. So yeah, so that is my last challenge. And like I said, it sounds like a lot of fun and I'm really, really looking forward to it. So anyway, guys, before I let you go for this video, I thought I'd show you what I'm knitting this weekend as well, because I do plan on not having to venture outside until I absolutely have to, which will be tonight to go pick up pizza for dinner. <laughs> We could get it delivered, but it's just as easy for me to get out and go pick it up. Besides, in this kind of weather, I like to try and start the car as often as much as I can so it doesn't freeze. Um, I'm in Toronto, but we don't have, we don't get this cold like they do out in Winnipeg and out west and stuff like that. And I know if you go out there, I know my cousin lived in Calgary for a number of years. And I believe it was like every time, like every Walmart or parking lot, like they had places to plug in your car because it gets that cold in the winter. We don't have that here. This is an this is an anomaly for us. So, you know, I like to go out there and get the car started every now and then. But anyway, what am I knitting? I just keep... Sorry, guys. This has been a very rambly video. I do apologize if that's not what you're into. I'm working on a pair of socks. This is the toe. <laughs> Isn't it adorable? Oh, I just love it. So this yarn, I, got, I have a finished sock, actually. This is the second sock. So the finished sock I will show you is here. There's the heel. And there it is. See the patterning in it? Isn't that beautiful? And you see the yarn? The yarn sparkles. The colorway on the yarn is called Toil and Trouble. So it's a Halloween yarn, which is always fun in January. Um, but yeah, and of course, it's living in my little witch's bag. And as you can see, the little witches are actually knitting. <laughs> Isn't that adorable? So yeah, so that's what I'll be working on this weekend. And I plan on catching up on booktube videos because even though I was off, for an entire 10 days, I barely got a chance to watch any booktube videos. You know, all this family stuff at the holidays, it just really cuts into the booktube time. <laughs> no, seriously. I hope you guys stay warm or stay safe if you're anywhere where the weather is inclement. For those of you who are in, you know, somewhere where it's warm, could you please some, send some our way? That would be wonderful. And until my next video, guys, take care and happy reading. Thanks for watching. Bye.